Hello there, and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy, the show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors, and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new Luminar Neo extension called Upscale AI. The Upscale AI allows you to upscale a photo up to six times and enhance image resolution in a natural way with AI. It will allow you to crop an interesting frame from a panoramic landscape, get high quality zoom-ins of a wildlife, improve macro shots, enhance old photos and prepare your images for printing. As you can see, we are already in Luminar Neo and we are starting in the catalog module. First, I want to show you how to install the extension. To do that, we're going to navigate to the top right corner of your screen, where you see the sign extension together with the orange puzzle icon. Simply click on it and that will open the extensions window. Once we do that, the extension window appears, and this is a place where we can look after all the extensions in Luminar Neo. Today we're talking about the upscale AI, so to install it we need to locate it and it should be the third one on your list. Once you purchase it, and don't forget that all the extensions are professional tools that have to be purchased additionally with your software. You can do that two ways. You can subscribe to Luminar Neo and get all the current and upcoming extensions, or you can purchase the extension bundle. Either way, they will be connected to your profile, and once you open this window, they should be ready to be installed. To do that, you will just have to click on this little button here. It takes usually 10-15 seconds, and once it's finished, it will prompt you with this sign installed. Once you finish, all you need to do is to just close it, and we're going to continue. This is a good time to remind you that this video is powered by our Luminar Neo Power Bundle. For a great price, you can get over 986 new elements to power up your Luminar Neo tools. With this bundle, you can get extra high-definition skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, sky objects, LUTs and presets. All of these will help you to transform your images with just a few clicks. If you want to learn more about it, you can follow the link in the description of this video or you can simply visit our website cleverphotographer.com. And now it's time to look at the extension. So first of all, where can you find it? Now we are in a catalog module and we need to go to the right side of the screen to look at the toolbar here. If you don't see it, you can just click on this little icon which hides it and open it. When you scroll down under the HDR merge and focus stacking, you should see the upscale extension. As you can see, it's ready to be used and this is where we would drag and drop our image. You should know that the upscale AI support all image formats supported by Luminar Neo. So all your JPEGs, RAW files, TIFF files will work here. In addition, you should also know that the upscale AI, just like the focus stacking and HDR merge, at this moment only work on the standalone version of Luminar Neo. So you can use it with your plugins like Lightroom, Photoshop or Apple Photos. Now to test the extension, we're going to be using this picture of the moon. As always, if you want to get it and follow me along, all you need to do is to jump into the description of the video, click on the link there and download the file. Now it's a picture of a moon and we can make it a little bit bigger. And it's a moon I captured here in Morocco during my trip. Now when we look at the details of the image, you can see that there's a high resolution. However, as I didn't have a long lens, I just had a 300 millimeters, it's really small. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to give it a quick edit and then crop it so I get a nice big moon. But of course, by the time I crop it, the resolution will be much smaller. 
And this is where our upscale AI tool will come really handy. So let's take the image and very quickly jump into the edit module and edit it there. Now to move it into edit module, once again, make sure that it's selected and then move it into edit module by clicking on edit on the top of your screen. Here, first of all, let's go ahead and crop it. You can just hit C on your keyboard, which will bring the tool, or you can locate it on your main toolbar. Here, we're gonna be looking for a square crop. So let's go in ratio and just select the one to one square. Once that's done, we need to adjust the actual crop and we're just gonna drag it and place it over the moon. So I really wanna quite small. So somewhere around here, let's have a look. When we hover over the corner, you can even see the resolution. And we are down from 6,000 to something like 1,188. Once we're happy, we can hit enter on our keyboard or simply click on apply on a crop AI tool. It takes a few seconds and it crops the image for us. Now we need to give it a quick development. For this, we're gonna go into our essentials in the main toolbar and open the develop pro tool. Very quickly, starting from the light, let's give it a little bit more exposure, maybe a little bit more contrast. With the highlights, we're gonna go very gently down and we're gonna open up the shadows a little bit. Now looking at it, we should also do some blacks and whites. So let's do that. Little bit of blacks on the minus side, so somewhere around minus 22. And little bit of whites, so let's have a look, maybe somewhere around 10. Once we're happy with the black and whites, we can close it. I think we can add a little bit more contrast and close the light section. We can also close the camera profile and we're gonna continue in the color. With the color, I think we're doing quite well. Uh, with the saturation vibrance, we could adjust it, but to make it and keep it very easy, we're just gonna skip this and quickly jump into the optics. In the optics, make sure that each of the check buttons is checked as it helps us to make sure that the auto distortion corrections are on together with the auto fix chromatic aberration and auto refrange. Close this and quickly jump into the noise reduction and sharpness. Open it and with the sharpness, let's just go somewhere around 60. And I know that this image was captured with 100 ISO. So with the luminosity, let's just go somewhere around 20. Don't forget with the sharpening to make sure that your masking is on. And I usually like to try to use something around 70. After this, we can close the sharpness. We can close the noise reduction and I think we're done. So we are done with the initial and very basic development. We can now close it and come back into catalog module. Here in the catalog module, where we select the image and scroll up, you can see that it's still showing as a 6,240. But in fact, it's much smaller. You saw it, it was somewhere around 1,200. So the key is now to take the image and drag and drop it on our upscale AI. Then let's scroll down so we can see it easily. And let's have a look at the options here. So we have the tool and we have a little eye icon in the top right corner. When we click on it, it gives us some information here. It tells us that the minimum input size is 257 pixels. It also tells us that the maximum input size is 16,000 pixels on the longest side. And it also tells us that the maximum output size is a 32,000 pixels on the longest side. So these are little quick information, so we can click away and continue focusing on the tool. When you hover over the image, you see this thumbnail and you also see the white circle with the dark cross over it, which allow you to then remove the image from the tool. Now we can drag and drop it on it again and we can have a look here. So we have the option to upscale the image two times, four times and six times. According to the Skylum, two times and four times works the best. So let's go the middle way and select the four times. Once we're happy with this, we can now click on the upscale and let the tool does its job. So let's click and we're gonna continue. Now, depending on how many times you're gonna upscale the image, the resolution and the size, this process may take anything from few seconds to few minutes. So what it's gonna do now, it's gonna actually take the image with all of your edits, it's gonna export it as a TIFF file, and then it's gonna upscale it according to your settings. 
Once the upscale is over, it plays the new image into the upscale folder in your folders. The upscale folder is actually located in your image or picture folder on your computer. If you don't know where it is, you can just right click on it and click on show in finder or show in window. This way it will open the window and you will be able to see the location. So now let's just click on the new image and let's bring it, drag and drop it into the original location. In our case, it was here, so we can move there. And now we see the image we edited together with the new image. So let's just scroll up. And I know you can't see the right resolution here, but it was about 1200. And when we click on the new image, you can see that now it's about 4700. So you can see that it also includes the crop we have set it earlier. Now let's zoom in. And you can see that we still have all the textures and details on it. However, it's four times bigger than the original image. So as you can see, using the upscale AI is really simple. All you need to do is to drag and drop the image on the tool, then select how many times you wanna upscale it, and then just click on upscale. Once the process is over, the image go into your new upscale folder. And from here, you can now drag and drop it into different folder and continue with the edit in the edit module. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website, cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.